Hey guys, it's Heather the Crochet Witch. How are you guys doing? So, this is, I don't know where that came from, this bit of excitement. <laughs> um, but today is my hashtag movie and stitch letter T. Yes, letter T. I know where it came from because I'm almost through the alphabet. That's what it is, yes. If you are just joining the hashtag movie and stitch, where have you been for the last year and a half? <laughs> this was a last year project that I'm endeavoring to finish up this year. Uh, it was started by Terry from the Yarn Joy podcast. Uh, as I try to mention each time, hopefully I have successfully done that. <laughs> I'm sure everybody already knows because... Uh, Terry and her gang that had started this, I believe, have all finished. Um, but it basically, uh, everybody who's participating um, and who has restarted, because people have restarted also, um, I'm just like somewhere in the middle where I had started with the original gang and then lost my way and restarted, um, like picked back up, not restarted from the beginning. Um, but we're going through the alphabet and watching movies and working on a project or projects, whatever uh, you choose to do, that kind of goes along with it. Uh, like some people are doing like one project and picking uh, from each movie uh, colors from the movie posters or just inspired from the movie itself. Some people were doing um, squares for each movie. Some people were doing amigurumis for each movie. Um, just different things. So I am doing a Halloween themed blanket. And because I am doing all horror movies, because you know, your girl loves horror movies. You know that already. If you've been with me any amount of time. <laughs> um, so my whole alphabet has been, um, Mostly all of my favorites. There's been, I think there's been a couple that I haven't seen before just because like maybe certain letters I just happen to have not seen a movie from. But I think, I think most of them I've seen and I have had a favorite or at least one that I like. Maybe not a favorite favorite, but. Um, and we are on T. So also if you've been through the alphabet with me, you know I'm about to give you basically a little review of my take on it, whether it be a popular opinion or not. Uh, I have been trying to shorten these a little bit <laughs> because some of the movies I do get on quite a bit of a tangent about and over explain. And basically like some people have said, <laughs> said that I, uh, they don't need to watch the movie now because of me, because I basically like audiobook the whole thing for them. Some people have said they feel like they've watched the movie on their way to work because of me. Um, I hope that's a good thing. Some people <laughs> uh, some people like it. Some people don't. Sorry. I, if you don't, I guess you're not watching. But um, hopefully you do. Uh, but I am trying to make it a bit shorter. Uh, and this month, I will get on with it. Speaking of trying to make it shorter, this month, uh, this week, I'm doing the letter T. T. <laughs> um was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, which I didn't realize. I knew there were several versions. Uh, I thought there were th maybe three. I think there's like, I didn't realize how many. I think there might be like six, and that's not counting. There's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 at, at least. Um, and I think there's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 out there. Um, I don't know about four or five or anything like that. Um, I know for a fact there's two because that's on Netflix, by the way. Um, because I had to go to Netflix, uh, to find the version that I wanted to watch. I thought I had it on DVD. I used to have it on DVD. Um, I believe it's one of the DVDs that my ex-husband kept. Because he liked to keep a lot of my favorite things. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so, I have seen the original. It's been a long time since I've seen the original. Um, I think the original one, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think originally the original one was in black and white, maybe? And then they colorized it? I might be wrong. I might be wrong about that. I feel like I saw it in color, but I think it used to be in black and white. That's really not important. 
And this is why my videos go so long when I'm reviewing a movie, because I get stuck on a thought. Anyway. Um, and, like, that one was okay. Um, I do appreciate classics. I do appreciate older movies. I even appreciate, like, old bad movies. Like, Godzilla's... The Godzilla movies, like, the old Godzilla movies are some of my favorites. And I, I know that they're, like, horrible. But I love them. <laughs> uh... And I appreciate, like, the old monster movies and such, you know, and I know that compared to, like, the new um, cinematic masterpieces, they're not the same as far as, like, explosions and different things, you know, but um, I, I love them anyway. Um, the technology is not the same, I know, but I think they're wonderful. Well... Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I do appreciate the first one, but it is not my favorite version. Um, my favorite version is the 2003 one I found out. Uh, I had to look up what year it was going by the cast. Uh, if you are familiar with the actress Jessica Biel, uh, it's the one that she's in. Um, she's not the reason why I love it or anything. Um, actually, if you go by actors and actresses... Uh, if you are familiar with Eric Balfour, he is also in the uh, sci-fi show Haven. I really like Eric Balfour, <laughs> and he's in that one. Um, but that's not the sole reason why. You know who else is in it that I really like <laughs> is, uh, have you guys ever seen Full Metal Jacket? The drill sergeant? The guy that's super... He's in it <laughs> as the sheriff of the town who is also part of the uh, Leatherface's family. And uh, he's he's so, so good at his part where he's obviously a lunatic, but he's very authoritative. And like at one point he's like ordering these girls down on the ground, like facing the ground while he's like, um, you think he's going to kill the guy that they're with. And he's just his amount of crazy balanced with authority oh he's creepy oh cast perfectly in my opinion just saying um anyway <laughs> uh so i i assume with there being so many versions of the texas chainsaw massacre that anybody who does like horror has is probably familiar with it uh so i won't go into like crazy amounts of detail but what i will say is uh they changed the names, but the basic concept of this one, they kept fairly similar to the first one, I believe, from what I remember of it. Like, it was still, it was set in the 70s. I'm pretty sure the first one was also set in the 70s. Uh, it was a group of, like, older teenagers or younger mid-20s kind of, you know, old teenagers, mid-20s type of kids. Um, and there was five of them there was five of them in this movie uh i think in the original one there might have been two girls and three guys that's what there was in this movie um and they were just supposed to be traveling through uh in this movie they were going to uh they were coming from mexico and before they went home they were going to a leonard skinner concert how cool would that be to see Leonard Skinner like in the prime of their concerting days in the 70s? Anyway, I'm not even going to get off on a music tangent. Not even. But it would have been cool. Um, and they end up getting stopped by... They almost hit this girl who was just like... It, they thought she was like tripping out on like acid or something and having a bad trip because she was just like... She didn't care if she got ran over. She was just walking down the road like zombified and... She got in her in their car, like they did get her into their van, um, because she was very clearly distressed <laughs> and saying how bad she needed to go home, and um, they were gonna try to find her help basically. And um, she got freaked out when she realized what direction they were going, and she ended up producing a gun out of nowhere. She was hiding it in a very inappropriate place, <laughs> and uh, done. Okay. And, um, there, that was the premise that got them, they were headed towards the town, 
whether they would have stopped there or not is a different story. Like, who knows? Maybe they weren't going to, but it freaked the girl out. But then they definitely stopped there because they wanted to get to the nearest phone so they could call the sheriff, who ended up being that drill sergeant guy that I was talking about. And uh, they tried to report it, the the fact that she did that and was now deceased. And um, that's what led them to this just crazy leather face stalking them. It was after that, just your classic uh, getting picked off one by one and, um, Leatherface <laughs> strikes. Um, I will say Jessica Beale's character was, she was the tough girl. She was the survivor. Um, the, in the original one, it was the, the blonde chick. Sally? Was it in the original one? I can't remember her name for sure. Um, I think, I want to say it was Sally. Because part of the trivia that I looked up, one of the facts I didn't write down for this one, was that um, Jessica Beale's character was supposed to have the same last name originally as the survivor from the first one. So I think they were going to try to make it like her her uh, family, but that would have been kind of weird, right? Like, what are the odds that her family... And then for them not to know either that her mom or her aunt or something got stuck in this place with this horrible monster <laughs> and then she happens to and also okay I see why they changed it but um yeah so Jessica Beale's character was like the strong survivor one and oh, she put Leatherface in a world of hurt let me tell you what she escaped he ended up chasing her he <laughs> uh got himself in the leg with his own chainsaw um which i guess they said was a, a nod to the original movie i don't remember him doing i'm not saying he didn't but i don't remember that part but i guess he did that in the original movie and then there was one part where i was i'm not usually that person that like yells at my tv screen or whatever but like I, don't, I was alone at the house. It was just me and Abby, you know, and Abby's a scaredy cat. She doesn't watch the movies that are scary with me. Like, I tried to coax her out there. I was like, Abby, I need comfort. And she was just like, not happening. You're on your own. So I petted her for all of a second, and then she took off on me. Winston was like that, too. He was not, like, not having it. He was like, sorry, Mom. Put on a cartoon, and I'll come cuddle. But if he heard, like, that horror movie like dun 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 you know he was out like he would get up from like a dead sleep when I was cuddling him and just out of the room not having it it's my brave protector <laughs> anyway <laughs> um where was I <laughs> uh so I was yelling at the tv screen because she escaped she got through the woods. She's running away. You think she's going to make it. And she gets, she hears like these cows, right? And <laughs> she sees this meat processing plant in the same town. Why would you stop? Why would you stop there and decide to run into the, this meat processing plant? Surely that's where he's comfortable with all of the meat hooks and the cleavers and the... <laughs> why would you do it? So I'm sitting there like yelling at my screen, like, don't go in there, you idiot. Why would you do, th you know, uh, I'm pretty sure I scared Abby at one point. She definitely wasn't coming for cuddles then. And, uh, but <laughs> when he did chase her in there and she was like skittering away from him, getting under all these places, it was hard for him to get into and stuff. Um, she found a cleaver and, uh, she, she, took one of his arms man she was not having it like she fought back hard he was I'm sure regretting picking off that or trying to pick off that one because I'm just saying so and that's I don't know that's why I like this version because like some of the guys went down fast like um I said I liked Eric Balfour a lot uh, as an actor, and he was I uh, was texting my sister and I was like why does Eric Balfour have to die first? <laughs> because uh they at that point didn't know what was going on and he got like picked off like so quick like he had no chance at all he was just gone and then um when they they thought something was up that he was like being held in this house 
but they still didn't know something like as sinister as Leatherface was going on. Jessica Beale and one of their f- friends went back to rest. They were just going to rescue him. I'm sure they probably figured just like, you know, the scary people at the house had him kidnapped or something, but not to the degree that <laughs> was going on. Um, the friend like pretty much bit it right away too. It was just like two deaths were just qu- so quick, so quick out of the five. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, it was your basic, you know, slasher. Uh, I will give away the ending and spoil it too because I always do. Um, and say that uh, Jessica Biel did get away. Oh, that was the. I told you she was a really tough chick, right? During part of it, and I don't remember this being part of the original movie either, although it might have been, I just don't remember the original very well. Um, there was, when she was trying to get away and she was having her, like, I mean, everybody's, I, I would have been panicking through this whole thing, but uh, everybody's going to have, even the bravest characters are going to have their moment of panic, right? She had her moment of panic when she came upon this trailer, and these two, I don't know if they were sisters or what, but these two older ladies, it was an older lady and a middle-aged lady or whatever, these two women were in this trailer and let her in, and they were being really calm and like, she's she's crying, she's freaking out, she's, you know, terrified, she's, he's going to get me in, and they're just like, oh, you're okay, sit down, have some tea, it's okay, you know, and I mean, she's flipping out, and um, they're just, it's okay, you know, and um, she uh, notices at one point, spoiler there too, they drugged her with the tea because they were basically slowing her down so that he could get her back into the house Leatherface could but um she notices while she's drugged and about to pass out that they have a baby in the place in the trailer and I don't know how like okay yes it was true but like how you just straight jump to that conclusion (laughs) she's just like about to pass out and suddenly she's crying and screaming that's not your baby you stole that baby and (laughs) It was kind of funny because I like how fast she jumped straight to it. But <laughs> anyway, um, so when I said she's like awesome and everything, uh, right at the end, she did escape. She got this truck driver to stop and then it kind of like went through the same motions where she was kind of in the place of the girl they found in the beginning where she was like wandering and this guy did pick her up and she's like you're going the wrong way don't go back to this town don't stop and she's freaking out well she didn't she didn't off herself like the girl did while this guy went to the house that was the family home of Leatherface and he didn't know it um He was trying to tell him, like, I have this girl. I need help. She's, you know, being crazy. Um, She snuck out of the truck. She used them, the guy, as a distraction and stole the baby. Got into the cop car of the corrupted cop and ran the cop over when he was looking for her because he was like, how I'm going to get her now, you know. And she took off to safety and saved the baby (laughs) so she's just all around awesome so anyway i like strong female characters so she was awesome so i really do i really do like this like this version uh yeah like i really like if you're familiar with um rob zombies movies i really love house of a thousand corpses but like Oh, I don't want to spoil it. Never mind. But <laughs> let's just say the the female escapee was not the strong female role that Jessica Biel was. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so that was the recap. Hopefully, it was a little bit shorter than usual. I tried really hard. <laughs> um, you know me and my tangents, though. I do have a little bit of trivia that I wrote down because I I I think trivia is interesting. I'm that person, though, so. Hopefully you do too. Um, After learning about plans for the remake to even happen, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, Andrew 
Bryn Niarski. Brian Niarski. Brian Niarski. The uh, guy who plays Leatherface. He went up to the producer at a Christmas party to personally ask him if he could play the role of Leatherface. And he got it. So that worked out for him. Good play, Andrew. (laughs) Um, And then something actually that I already knew uh, because I'm that kind of creepy girl. Uh, Leatherface was inspired by, like, the movies all say inspired by a true story. Leatherface himself is not the true story, but uh, he was inspired by a serial killer named Ed Gein, or Gein, uh, if you're familiar with him. Like, there's just no way to do a good, like, crochet and murder show. Or I could totally do that. <laughs> I know way too much, like, way more than I probably should about, like, serial killers and murder mystery stuff. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, uh, he was inspired by him because Ed Gein did the same, like, he did kill some people, but he also did like grave robbing where he got a lot of his um, body parts. And during any Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I've seen, not only did he like skin the people to wear their face, which Ed Gein did also. He had a he had a woman suit that he fashioned after his mother. But uh, he had... Ed Gein had some crazy stuff. He had, like, lamps made out of skin or body parts. He had, like, a belt made out of different body parts. He had, he even had, like, I don't know what body part he used, I'm just saying, but he had, like, the, um, like, a for the little things that are on, like, the pull cords for, like, a lamp or whatever made out of body parts. He had a chair made out of body parts. I think that was the skin that was stretched out. He had, he was gruesome. Ed Gein was gruesome. But he was like a normal, I mean, he wasn't normal, obviously. But like, if you didn't know that he was doing the things he was doing, you would think he was just like, I don't want to say he was like socially totally fine. But like, like people trusted him to like babysit because he was sort of like, had the mentality of the kids around town. Like, they thought he was basically, like, a gentle person. That's a good way to put it, I guess. But, like, he wasn't um, anybody that they were worried about. And then he was going home and doing all of that stuff. And then that escalated to murder. (laughs) But Leatherface was based off of him in real life. So if you didn't know that, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, This particular version, this 2003 version of this movie, uh, the film critic Robert Ebert from Siskel and Ebert, uh, if you're familiar with them, uh, I think are both of those guys, have they both passed away now? I think maybe they have. Oh, anyway, Roger Ebert gave this film a rare zero stars rating i disagree mr ebert i'm sorry but i do i know i'm not a film critic (laughs) but i really i really like this one um sorry but i I guess we don't all have to agree (laughs) um and the last trivia fact that i had was actually so this was a 2003 released movie in 2002 Uh, They announced that Marilyn Manson was supposed to be the composer for this movie, uh, but he had to bow out due to uh, scheduling conflicts. Otherwise, the soundtrack or whatever to the movie would have been composed by Marilyn Manson. So, cool. Like, I think that's cool, but I also... I don't know. Like, if movies or shows are set back in time... I like it when they have period music to it. So, like, I'm cool that, like, Leonard Skinner was in it. But it would have been weird to me to have, like, too much, like, modern. Even though I like Marilyn Manson a lot, it would have been weird to me to have too much of that. Like, um, American Horror Story did that uh, in Freak Show. 
I think it was. They ha- I mean, they've done it in other ones too, but Freak Show is the one that really like graded me <laughs> because uh, it was set in like, I don't know, the 40s or 50s or something. It was when they still had like traveling freak shows. And like maybe they were on their way out, but they were still a thing, you know, more, way more than they are now. And one of like the, the lead character was a singer and she was singing stuff, but she was singing like Nirvana and David Bowie. And I'm like, like, I love Nirvana and I love David Bowie, but in the 40s and 50s, it was just like a pet peeve thing. I don't know. I'm weird like that. But anyway, so enough about the movie, enough about my musical weird preferences, but that was my trivia for it. Hopefully you found something in there of use to you. Maybe it'll save you in Final Jeopardy one day. I don't know. But, so, about this blanket. Ah, I am double excited because, I'll tell you in a second, I'll tell you in a second. So, I got three squares done. I actually ended up watching two different versions of this movie. I watched the one I intended to watch, and then because I had been just sitting there staring watching the movie, uh, I didn't finish all three of these, and I wanted to finish all three of these because I usually do in one sitting. Um, I actually ended up watching, there's a Netflix version that just came out recently and I watched that too which I thought wasn't going to be good at first and then and it ended up being okay I'm just saying but I'm not going to sit here and review that one <laughs> it was okay if you're looking for something to watch it's it's worth maybe watching if you're bored anyway so I'm doing these solid granny squares so let's talk crochet <laughs> I'm doing these solid granny squares um out of this most beautiful Karen Jumbo in the color plum copper this is the rarest commodity of Halloweenish colored yarn ever, I swear. So hard to find, very discontinued apparently. Was very lucky to get the, I think I had uh, three skeins of this to begin with, and then had to get one from a friend. Um, if I ever run across these, I'm going to scoop them up, I'm going to hoard them, I'm going to love and cherish them. I love these and I want to make so many things with them, <laughs> um, but I'm very glad to have what I have. So I've been making solid granny squares. Most all of them have patterned and pooled like this. Um, and then on the outside, like this one is in, these are all Joanne's, this one is in Joanne's classic. Yes, Big Twist classic. In, in the color pumpkin. And then this one is in another Big Twist classic in the color violet, both of which you can still get. But this one is in the Big Twist. It's another Joanne's Big Twist, but it is in rainbow in the color lime. And it is discontinued. Um... I believe when they discontinued most of the rainbow colors, that's when they introduced the classic because it is basically the same yarn. There's slightly less fuzz to these, to the classics, but they're both like listed as a size five yarn. They're roughly the same yarn. Honestly, same feel, same everything. And I'm using them the same together. And even though they're listed as a size five yarn, I'm using them with the same hook and in with the same size four yarn that is the Karen Jumbo and it's working out just fine. So I am doing squares like all three of these. I am joining them with a Red Heart with Love in the continuous join in the color just black. And what I'm excited about, what I'm excited about with these particular three and why I wanted to get this set done, these are my last three squares that I had to do you guys. So for my next one, I will be joining these, and then the rest of my movie and stitches, I will be working on the border, and I will be working on the last of my little ghost appliques that I've been doing, and sewing them on. Aren't they cute? I wish, I hope, I, sh I wish and I hope <laughs> that you can see the sparkle with my light here, because this is a Red Heart with Love sparkle, and it's got that iridescent -y sparkle in it. But I've made ghosts in varying sizes. I still have to put the eyes on the big ones. But 
So I have some ghosties and I have to put the RIP on it, but I made, I just free handed um, a tombstone. And I'll probably make another one of those. And those are just gonna be my little appliques on the blanket. I don't wanna like overload it with appliques that I don't wanna take away from the actual blanket really. So those are going on it. And I'm going to do a border with, cause I have quite a bit of each one of these left over. Like this is all this, I used hardly any. So I'm gonna use these colors in the border with uh, more of the Red Heart black. So I'm very excited about that, you guys. And then this will be done. So we're getting it wrapped up. I'm so excited. And I'm excited to have this done. I have been like dreaming about this Halloween blanket for so long to get it done. And that's why I wanted to do it with the movie and stitch thinking that I would um, stick with it from the beginning. And then like when I kind of like let it drop in the middle, I was so disappointed in myself. <laughs> um, but that's why I was like, I need to pick it back up. I was like, I can't, I can't, I don't even want it to end up being like a whip weekend project. Like I want to continue this and finish the the movies and this, you know, everything, the movies and the stitch. And yeah, I mean, I did basically want to do that. So I'm just excited that it's, it's almost done. So very proud. <laughs> it will be a proud moment. Uh, I think I just need to get to the U, the letter U reveal. I almost made a W, the U. And I'm excited for my W. I already know what my W is going to be too. Anyway, ahead of myself. Um, I know it's, it's horror. It's close enough. It's, it's, um, not scary, but I'm like pretty desensitized. I think so. It's still a horror category, I think. So my U is ready. Underworld. I really, really, really like Underworld. Um, I think I'm going to save that for the review and shut up. <laughs> Just, it's gone on long enough. All right, I am gonna go. I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Mwah. Bye, guys.